Hi, I'm Maddie. And I'm Chris. You've been asking some more amazing questions and they're becoming increasingly complex, which is great. I mean, luckily we've dressed up in our school uniform. Yes. Right, first question. Ricky Hugger Ingerman. Brilliant nice name. name. Um, asks, why are humans the only animals on Earth that give birth to a baby that cannot walk? Or are we? No, we're not. There are actually quite a few animals that can't walk um, where they've just been born. Um, most of them are mammals. And interestingly, the larger the brain relative to body size, the longer it takes to learn to walk. So things like hoofed animals can walk within the first few, few hours of birth. Uh, rodents, small carnivores can take a few weeks. Non-human primates, a few months. And of course yeah. humans, we can take up to a year, sometimes longer. We are dependent on our parents for a really long time. Thanks, mum. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that means that things like prey animals have to learn to walk very quickly. Obviously, they're prey, they need to be able to get away. Whereas us, we're a uh, top predator, basically. So for us, it kind of doesn't matter. So yeah, we can take our time, it's like casual. Nothing's gonna catch us. We have a brilliant question from Hawk0485 who has asked roughly how many generations of ancestors does each and every one of us have? Well, the first Homo sapien, sapien. Say, I say sapien, you say sapien. Uh, <laughs> walked the earth approximately 200,000 years ago, which means that about 10,000 generations have happened to get to the well, pinnacle of evolution <laughs> of you and me. <laughs> it's like right here. The pinnacle yeah. of evolution. <laughs> But you don't actually have to go that far back, do you, to find a common ancestor? So someone who is related to every single one of us alive on the planet now? No, you don't, because if you think, you know, think about it, we've got two parents, they've both got two parents of their own, so that's four grandparents, yeah. eight great-grandparents, and so on and so on. And that's kind of exponential growth in the number of ancestors. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you'll get in about a thousand years, that's kind of around 35 generations, you're looking at 35 billion ancestors. But I mean, that's more people than are alive on this planet today, like let alone a thousand years ago. Exactly, so, so that's in, that's the kind of pure version. Mm. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, there's been a lot of inbreeding. <laughs> I just like, promote inbreeding. <laughs> right, can I just... Chris, you just unfortunately, there's been a lot of inbreeding. <laughs> we are just one big family. Just to be clear, when we're talking about inbreeding, we're not suggesting that people are having relationships with their brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. We're sort of talking like second cousins and very far distant cousins. So how far do you have to go back then to find that one common ancestor who's related to everybody? So if we take into account that kind of local inbreeding, researchers reckon that you'd only have to go back around 100 generations, which mm. is less than 3,000 years ago. That's crazy. Okay, I've got one for you this time, especially for you. From Miss Dino Gal. She wants to know, why do some animals eat poo when there's other food sources available? Oh, gross. Okay. Um, nice one. Right, what a delicious question. Um, so, some omnivores and herbivores, so let's say like rabbits and rodents, they have a diet of plant material, which is actually pretty difficult to digest. So, by eating their feces, it's like going for a second meal. Yeah. They, get, they get a second chance of taking in those nutrients. It's so called, that's why they do it. It's called coprophagia, by the way. Consumption of feces. You might find or see, on the odd occasion, your dog opting to make a meal out of your cat's poo. You think it's a stick? It's not a stick, oh, no. it's a poo. <laughs> um, but the reason the dogs will go for cat poo is because it's actually quite rich in protein. So if you're on a protein high diet, don't eat cat poo. <laughs> and don't. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. <laughs> no, don't. And there's one more actually, koalas as well, because it's the same thing. So their nutrients, eucalyptus is like famously low in nutrients mm -hmm. and that's all they eat. So they have special bacteria in their gut. Yeah. Uh, which help them digest the eucalyptus. Yeah. Uh, so what they do is when they have a baby, they will feed it some of their, the mother would feed it some of its own poo. Um, so they get those bacteria and that, that helps them hey. digest the eucalyptus. So they're passing on the bacteria. Well, that's gross. Anyway, if you're still with us and haven't been completely grossed out, congratulations, give yourselves a <laughs> pat on the back. But um, keep your questions coming in and we will do our best to answer the most challenging ones. And we do read all of the comments, so yeah, keep them coming in. We do, and we'll read Twitter as well, so um, follow us there, at Earth Unplugged, and send us a message on Twitter, and we'll pick that up and uh, try and answer those as well. Yeah, and make sure you subscribe to Earth Unplugged, and we'll see you soon. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Wave.
You're still cool. rolling. That <laughs> was insane. <laughs> No one has ever clapped that loudly in the history of claps ever. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. We have a brilliant question from Fork. <laughs> <laughs> you're not Fork, you're Hawk. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. 